Alright, take two, you guys. <laughs> I recorded the video and then promptly forgot to save it, which I, this is the second time I've done that. I don't know what's going on with my computer. Anyway, hey, happy Friday and welcome to another uh, session of All Booked Up. Um, gonna talk about my January book um, and uh, do a little something extra special for you guys over the, at the end, so stick around and then I'll, of course I'll Tell you what I'm reading in February. Um, Y'all thought I forgot about you because it's already the ninth, but that is not. I actually finished this book very early in January and then just moved on with life and said, oh, you know, you need to record your video. Um, so anyway, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope you're having a happy Friday. If you're in the Mobile area and you're not watching this because you're downtown, then, you know, please be careful. It's madness out there. But have fun. Um, we're losing not Mobile natives and not here locally it is our Mardi Gras season so that's all the parades and all the festivities are happening um for the next couple of days so to wrap this up before um before Easter season happens so yeah here we are back again uh hope 2024 has been good to you January it seems like it simultaneously takes forever and then it's over in a blink of an eye I don't know if it's like that way for you guys but it is for me um weird I know. Well, that's enough of that. Let's dive right in. So, I read for January, Juliet's Nurse by Louis Levin, and I hope that I did not mispronounce that last name, although I probably did, but that's okay. Um, so, this book was a standalone novel, historical fiction, slash, I would even say literary fiction, um... It is Romeo and Juliet retold through the first person perspective of Juliet's nurse, um, whose name is Angelica in this novel. I don't think she gets a name in the Shakespeare play. I think she's just the nurse. Um, but um, Mrs. Levin decided to give her a name and a perspective, and it's pretty good. Um, so how did I find it? It was either, you know, it, it says discard... Uh, mobile public library so it was either the friends of the library book sale which I mentioned before on here or um, you no know, possibly I picked it up just on the regular discard shelves that they used to have um, but yeah so uh, literary fiction historical fiction Romeo and Juliet retelling um, plot I give it a six as well as same for character development and uh, setting, I gave it an 8 because she really, excuse me, she really describes Vienna and you can see very vividly, um, you know, the Capulet, Capulet Villa and all of the surrounding countryside. And it's very pretty. And for someone who one day would love to go to Vienna, I'm sorry, Verona, did I say Vienna? Wrong, no, Verona, I'm so sorry. I would also like to go to Vienna. Sidebar, but that's not where the story takes place. Verona, in Fair Verona, where we lay our scene. Um, goodness, sorry guys, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, overall, I'm giving it a seven, um, and I will explain my moderately low ranking um, toward the end. Um, trigger warnings. Um, the only thing I will say is, um, you know, the obvious ones, if you've, you know, if you're familiar with Romeo and Juliet, the whole premise is <laughs> there's violence in the streets and, uh, you know, the, the, our star-crossed lovers, um, don't end well. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. So those are your two trigger warnings or, um, violence and, um, suicide um I would say I'm yes I would read this one again um as far as I've read other Romeo and Juliet retellings throughout the course of my reading life I guess and uh I feel like this one is the most true to the Shakespeare text um like this author um I'm not really sure what her background is um but she uh, definitely did her homework. 
So this is probably the most true to the text of the original Shakespeare that I've read. So if you're into that, you'll like this one. Um, I would loan this out, but again, this is a very niche kind of book. Um, a lot of my books seem that way. It's weird. Anyway, um, but yeah, this one's kind of niche. So like if you don't like Romeo and Juliet, you don't like retellings of Romeo and Juliet, you might not like this one, but I enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I think I, I, I think I will keep this one. At first I was kind of iffy on it, but I really, I really did enjoy this one. Um, yeah. And, uh, I, I want to point out something about the, the cover art, which is actually very pretty. But one of the things that I, I realized, and I'm sorry, there's a glare, um, really early on, uh, later on in the book is, and, and you're probably not gonna be able to see this very clearly, but Juliet in this, um, cover art is wearing a necklace and on the necklace is a honeybee. And that becomes very, that's a very important, like, kind of plot point. So whoever did the cover art to this, and I don't think that they are, I mean, they might be in like the acknowledgements credited with it, but I don't know who did the cover art, but it's beautiful. And their little honeybee necklace is very telling um, to the story. Um, my other thoughts were, and the reason I kind of gave this one a seven instead of like an eight or a 10 is because the author does something with the character of the nurse or Angelica that I didn't like. This is just a personal opinion, personal preference. I did not like, and I won't tell, I won't tell you what it is. If you want to know, you can DM me later, but, um, she makes the decision for the character that personally I did not like. I completely saw the trajectory and why she chose to do that and it made sense in the context of uh, her relationship to Juliet, but personally I was kind of like, uh, I see what you're doing, but I don't really like it. And because it's first person, the, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's first person and I didn't, I saw the point of it and I was like, okay, I see what you're doing, but I don't, I don't really like that, but that's, that's just me. Um, so yeah, really good one. I really enjoyed this one for, uh, January. Um, oh yeah, there's a honeybee on the cover. Yeah, this art, this cover art, truly, really, I'm like looking at it more clearly sitting here and it's very pretty. Um, there's like honeybees all over the spine and there's a honeybee and there's a honeybee and there's another one. Oh, right there. Um, and right there, and right there. Um, so yeah, it's just very, very good book. Very well written. Very, you can tell she really did, um, did her homework. So I really enjoyed that one. Um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do, I thought what I'd do is share with you guys, because, um, for those of you who know me well, know that I don't just read one book at a time. I can't, I tried, I don't know why it just works out that way. Um, but I'm just going to really quickly go through the other books I read during January in case you want to look it out. And I'll put, I'll put like, um, the information for that in the, uh, in the comment, in the, um, description of the, uh, video. Um, but I did read some other books. Um, obviously, Juliet's Nurse was my vlog. And then I read, um, two books that are based off of <laughs> television shows. Did not do them on purpose. I mean, I read them on purpose, but not at the same time. Anyway, <laughs> I ramble. I ramble. You know this about me. So the first one I read was Allegiance. It's a Stargate Atlantis novel. Um, and it's the third book in this little series that they've got. Authors are Melissa Scott and Amy Griswold. Um, and I wasn't going to finish it. Like, I wasn't going to finish the series, but I think now I have to. So, um, Callie, if you're watching, if you have the next book, please let me know. And when we see each other again, I'll, we'll exchange that out. Thanks. Thanks in advance. <laughs> um, and then I read One Year Gone by Rebecca Desertine. This is a supernatural novel. These supernatural books are really good, especially if you liked the show. If you don't like the show, then you're probably not going to like the books. But one thing I really like about this um this book series that they did is they like, um, like in the, oh, this is in the forward or something. 
somewhere in like the first couple pages, they tell you this one doesn't do that. Huh, weird. Anyway, um, so they usually say like this book takes place in between this episode and this episode of the show. So that's really cool, especially if you're follow if you follow the show and also Jensen Knuckles and Jared Padalecki, handsome, handsome men. Um, but yes, this one was also really good. This one actually was interesting. Hang on. Oh no, I read the other one. Yeah, this is the... Yeah, this one takes place in Salem. So, if you're into witchcraft, the Salem witch trials, this one's pretty good. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted tonight while I'm talking to you guys. It's very annoying. I apologize. Um... The other book I read, I read, in, uh, read it on my Kindle. I know, shock. <gasps> Look, all all reading is valid. <laughs> so I've got a Kindle, and I read, um, it's called Playing With Matches by Lee Strauss. It is a historical fiction set in Nazi Germany, but it's told from the perspective of, like, the Nazi youth, which is interesting because I don't, you don't really hear, you know, you don't really get a lot of that and, like, the propaganda and all of that that was going on, which is... Whew. Bizarre. Um, but it follows particularly this one young man who is at first really gung-ho about the, the Nazi youth and, like, really into this whole thing. And then he kind of, like, starts to realize what's actually going on and how, um, you know, maybe they're wrong about a lot of things. You know, so maybe, maybe start disbelieving the propaganda as it were, um, really good. I think it's, that was also the start of a series. Um, there's at least another book. There's at least a sequel to it, um, or something like that. Um, but I read that on my Kindle, so I can't show it to you guys because it's, I tried in the first take of this video and it didn't work. Um, and then the last book I read, which is actually my favorite book that I read through, uh, for January and I actually didn't read it either through Kindle or um, you know paper book uh, was I audio booked it and it was called when the moon is low by Nadia Hashimi and again my always disclaimer if I mispronounce these names I'm so sorry this book was so good you guys like it was so good um, it was set during the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan, and it followed this one family as they were, um, fleeing Afghanistan to, uh, as the Taliban really started, like, coming into power, and, like, just so poignant and so sweet and so, like, terrifying, and with everything going on in the world right now, it was kind of very, um, it very much so resonated and to see that um, refugee migration story through the eyes of of this woman and her family was very very powerful so kudos to uh, Nadia Hashimi it was a very good book I highly recommend it that was my favorite book that I read during January so um, yeah with all that being said that was January for me as far as reading goes guys I hope you guys are Digging into your uh, your book challenges and enjoying stuff. If y'all are reading fascinating things, let me know. I'm, you know, I'm always looking for good books to read. Um, if you want me to read something, as always, let me know. I will, uh, and I will try to get on that now. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens as the year progresses. I hope you guys are enjoying your year so far. Um, Tat and forgotten. Uh, my book for February is going to be. And it's a thicken. It's a big boy. The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper. This is the first book of a trilogy. All three of them are out. I have all three of them because I have a really good feeling about this book. I've heard about this book for about a year or so now. No, maybe a little longer. Maybe it's been a couple years. Anyway, um, fairly a fairly new book. I think it was published in 2019, I want to say. Oh, no. 20, 2022. Uh, so, um, yeah, really, really recent, um, but I'm really excited to get into this one, um, is a thick boy, and I've, I'm, you know, like, right there, so, like, I haven't gotten really deep into it, but I'm interested to dive into 
this one uh, and see what this one's all of. Um, but anyway, so that is, that's it for me. I hope you guys have a, a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend and stay safe and, um, you know, keep reading and let me know what y'all are reading because I'm always interested to know. Um, and until next time, I'm Lisa and I'm all booked up. <laughs>